What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing very well. In this video, I'm going to be running through some of the top limited cards that I think you should be buying. I'm not just going to give you obvious answers. I'm going to drop a little bit of knowledge where I feel that there are some, some good opportunities right now. You could argue that the whole limited market right now is a good opportunity, but I'm going to signal out some players in different categories that I feel could improve your gallery. Let's get on with the video. <laughs> Right then, before we do jump into the video of all these limited cards that I'm going to run you through, I've got to announce this as well. You may have already entered it over on my Twitter. There'll be a link to it in the description down below. But if you haven't seen the video that I've done with SoRare Community Manager John, it'll be in one of the corners up the top here. We basically had a little giveaway done where whoever would lose would put up a, a prize and so on and so forth. I've put up a Season 2 RJ Barrett card. SoRare have offered a little something better. A pair of NBA tickets, yes. One pair of NBA tickets is going to go to one of you guys that's watching this video right now. All you have to do, as per the tweet, you've got to be subscribed to us here on YouTube to drop a sub down below. You've got to go and follow myself, the podcast itself, the Swingman Podcast, John, the Sora Community Manager, and Sora NBA on Twitter or on X, however it's called now. Uh, and then just go and simply repost the post, like the post in two friends. All of it's on there. I'll draw the winner on the 15th of December. I don't know if I'll have a video up where I'll draw it or if I'll do it in, in any case, but go and check it out. You have to get involved with it if you're watching this video. On to the limited cards. Right then, so the format that I want to do for this video per se is I'm going to have sort of different sort of subjects of players. What I mean by that is there's obviously your run-of-the-line MVPs. I'm not going to break it down by cap per se. I'm going to put players into sort of categories. And the first category that I'm going to go off of is sort of filling in lineup players. And by that, I mean, if some mega superstar or important player on a team gets injured, who's the next man up? Who's the next guy up that could, in theory, go off a mad amounts of points in comparison to what his L10 on so rare would usually be? To start this off with, I'm going to be talking about Paul Reed. Paul Reed is sort of a well-known one in general, but obviously, whenever Joel Embiid sits a game, Paul Reed will have a big boost in minutes. Now, Nick Nurse at the start of the season did say he plans on playing both of them together. We haven't really seen that come to fruition. Granted, we're about a quarter of the way through the season so far, but nothing like that we've regularly seen. Obviously, I could be doing this on SoRare Data, but SoRare have improved their AI and their UI sort of things, not their AI. They've improved their UI in a sense that now you can sort of show this on the homepage for it. Now, you can see his normal usual scores that you'd, you'd come to expect. They'll be in and around the sort of 10 mark, 10 to 15 to 20. That's what a normal Paul Reed game will get you. However, on nights where Joel Embiid won't play, he'll be in the 30s, potentially and even the 50s. But you'd expect around the mid-30 mark for him, which for someone with an L10 of 16 is always nice to have. Now, in those times where Embiid will come up on underdog or he'll be listed on the injury report as that he's questionable or he's a game-time decision, this is where the market moves for Paul Reed normally. It's good to have him in your gallery at all times for these situations. Now, you can look at it in two ways. You can look at it as if you have one to play or you have one to sell. But I think in all the cases for this, Paul Reed is normally a good play option. If there's a back-to-back -back that's coming up in game week 15, per se, with the Pistons and the Hornets, Joe and Embiid probably won't play both of those. It's not me knowing anything. I'm just guessing here. Now, obviously, with the stipulation of what the all-star changes, what the, the all-star requirements changed and players having to play 65 games and 30 minutes a game and whatnot, it has shifted a little bit. There hasn't been as many people sitting for game like rest management and things like that. But I think Paul Reed's one that you can get in at a decent price. I mean, if we look, if we scroll on over to the marketplace now, you're looking at season two cards going for six quid here, four quid for a season one card. If you look at some of the previous auctions, four pound, five pound, they're not expensive. So I think they're good to have in your gallery for when one of those weeks happens. And for that reason, Paul Reed is a good option to have in your gallery at all times. And like what I mean by having him at all times is you avoid these silly spikes when Joel Embiid is questionable for times. Like if you look at sort of these areas here, you can obviously tell when Embiid has picked up a questionable tag. Even recently, he jumps up to sort of 12 to 13 pounds and you're talking like near on 3x's price. So you can either look at it as a way of flipping it or playing it. But I think, I think he's a good one to have in your gallery at all times. On to the next part. So then in a similar light to Paul Reed, Bobby Portis is one that fits in well with Yanis Antetokounmpo sitting. Now, obviously, Bobby Portis has got a bit more of a productional role than Paul Reed within this Bucks team. He will get minutes regardless and he'll get good usage rate. He will normally score in and around the mid-20s. 
But unlike Paul Reed, there are times where he can hit in the 30s doing this. The reason I've got Bobby Portis in this sort of section of the video is because if Yanis does sit, he becomes even better for the Bucks. You can expect 40 to 50 point games for him at his pomp, at his prime. If, he's, if you're going to have a true Bobby Portis night, and this includes sort of garbage time minutes that can come into effect as well. So I think in terms of this aspect, he's a little bit older than Paul Reed. He's at 28. And if you look at him on the marketplace as well, I think like, again, six quid for a season two card. You're looking at four pounds for a season one card here. You can probably snag them on auction for in and around five pounds on the season two cards right now. So I think if you're looking at it in that perspective, Paul Reed and Bobby Portis are on teams that also should be expecting to get fairly decent, get a fairly decent way into the playoffs. So that's how I also like to look at players when I'm buying them. So I think for the exact same reasons as Paul Reed, Bobby Portis is another option. On a little bit of the same sort of realm, but a bit different, is Andrew Nemhard. Now, Andrew Nemhard, coming out of his rookie class last year, his rookie year last year, had a couple of special moments. He had that big game against Golden State Warriors last year and then sort of started to tail off a little bit as Halliburton become even more sort of influential on this Pacers side. And it still remains the same. He's not started off season two in the best of lights, but I think that's an issue in terms of the Pacers getting new guys in shifting things around. Bruce Brown was an addition into the team, which saw Nemhard's minutes lose out a little bit more. But if Halliburton sits, Nemhard will normally go into that starting lineup. The reason I like Nemhard is he's a guard who can get you defensive actions. He has a good amount of steals in his game. He can get the odd block, but he's also sort of an, a, a facilitating playmaking point guard. He isn't just going for points. That's what I like about him. He's young as well. The Pacers should be getting into a decent sort of area in playoff contention where ex I, I would expect them to be making a playoff spot but it, again you're looking at these sort of cut the card prices on the limited market for him right now three pound fifty for his season two card a little bit less for his season one card i'd probably if me i'd for the first two i would go for their season two ones for this one i'd probably actually go for a season one card because it is the rookie one and so rare can potentially do something with like a rookie tournament or something down the line and that's just how I do it. I don't know anything about that. It's just me guessing. But that's one of the reasons I like Andrew Nemhard as well. And again, he can go off of those big scores. Like I mean, we're, we're looking at a guy with an L10 of 18 here, and he can go into the 30s and the 40s. So there is scope for it. The last one of this sort of realm of backup guys I think you should always have, I've mentioned him on the channel before in some of my lineup videos, that he's burned me in, is Jackson Hayes. Yes. So he's 23 again, another young guy that's going to be in this class. He is eligible for that under-23 tournament that did just drop. Jackson Hayes is one of the guys that's come in and he's behind Anthony Davis, who, and you can argue he's the second string Christian Wood would potentially be seeing the bump in usage first before Jackson Hayes. But I think the influence he can have on that team, if AD sits tonight and LeBron plays with D'Angelo Russell and all those guys, you can see Jackson Hayes score. Uh, I don't know why, it, it's really annoying when I'm scrolling through it. It's making me click on every single game. But he can have a night where he has 20s or a 30-point score. He's at an L10 all the way down at 9 because he'll normally come in for the Lakers and have very few actions, and that's why. Now, they've got a, they've got a double game coming up where they play the Mavs and the Spurs, notorious teams that don't normally do well with big man, even though when Banyama's at the Spurs now. But, I mean... You look at Jackson Hayes' current card price. I think it will be like less than two quid, two pound fifty. Like I've got a bid on one at the moment, so you're probably going to steal this one. But like, I'd go out and buy a season two card for the sake of it because it's also in that Lakers jersey, and that does just end up affecting season prices on cards. I don't know why. On the rare side of things, you're looking at sixteen pounds for him. So I think again, he's one of them that's good to have and hold. And if anything happens with AD, where he's a late scratch. He's going to be a guy that will boom in price that we've seen before. He has that sort of caliber just because, one, he's young, two, he plays for the Lakers, and they're expected to make the playoffs as well. So I think it's another solid little option to have in your gallery at all times. Right, The <laughs> I know what you're seeing on your screen now. You're going, Luka Doncic is a limited card, really? And yes, if I'm going to have to put one MVP guy in this lineup, in this lineup, in this sort of video, and it's primarily because it's not going to be... I wouldn't pick a Jokic, I wouldn't pick Embiid, I wouldn't pick Yanis. I own an Embiid, I own a Yanis, I also own a Luka. The reason it's Luka is because he's 24. And the beauty of so rare is you own these cards forever, you have them forever. And I know that there's going to be stipulations where new tournaments arise and you want the new season card for them. But they'll always have those evergreen staple core competitions. And Luka Doncic is always going to be the top or top five MVP caliber 
realm player. At 24, you've got him for ages. His floor is ridiculously high and his ceiling is even higher. The guys at sort of like this level here, he will consistently put up triple-double performances for you on so rare. He is the main man in that Mavericks team, even with Kyrie Irving now there. And I can't really look past the fact that right now, Luca is like 150. 150 for his old season one card, 190, 180 for his season two card. To me, it's a no-brainer. If you want to seriously take, if you want to take if you want to take limited seriously enough in the champion mode, you need a top tier MVP. That's just how it's always been. I tried last year doing it with guys like Jalen Brown, Julius Randle, and things like that. And every now and then you will score well because they will have a outlying performance game. But that steady performance level comes from the top tier MVPs. And that's how it should be. I don't want Luca being less than this. There, there isn't an appetite for me where I want everyone to be really cheap. And that's not just because I'm invested in these cards. I want to see the top players in the game have a top rating and a top sale price because it should be an aspiration. If I win a Luca, I want to feel really excited about it that I know his value is high. That's how it should be. That's how I've always explained. Anyway, that's for another video. But I think if you're talking just core competition gameplay, I think Luka Doncic is the best limited card that you can buy as an MVP card. Another must-have for me is Alperin Sengun. 21 years of age at the Rockets. Again, could be in that under-23 tournament that's just dropped and that will come in and out throughout the season here on Season 2. He's a guy that, at the moment, he's at a high L10 at 44, but he's always someone that is going to be a smash play one week. He will go through stages because he's on a team like the Rockets that are still learning, they're still developing. I know Fred Van Vliet's there, I know Dylan Brooks is there, they've got experienced players now. But still, the expectation of the Rockets isn't to be anywhere near those top teams. So they're going to go through streaky stretches where they're not great and he will put in low performance games. The reason I think he's someone to always own is because he is capable of dropping a 60-point game, a 50-point game. And he even at his L10 at 44, it's going to be great. Now, granted, yes, he's coming up against the Grizzlies in the next couple of weeks, so he's probably going to outperform his cap in those games. But again, you're looking at a guy here who's 21. You will have him throughout the league. He's going to be in the NBA for quite a while in any case. You're looking at a guy like this and £17 for his Season 1 card, or you're talking 25 quid for a season two and on auction you can probably get him for a little bit less than that 22 23 right now as i'm recording this video to me it's a no-brainer pick to have and hold in your gallery as a core guy that you're not going to play every week but every now and then he's going to be an option for you and you already have him and you haven't got to worry about the spikes in price another guy that's like that is going to be scotty barnes uh 22 years old playing at the raptors still they're going again through a bit of a transitional period i'll say uh last year playing as a point guard was not really his sort of jam uh, he's started the season well, I would say. Not, I'm not going to jump on sort of MVP hype that was towards the start of the early chat when he was getting 70 and 60 point games. But it shows that it's in his locker. He can do that. He's talented enough to produce that. The thing with Scotty as well is he can go on nights where he'll get a 28 or a 30, which is way below his L10. But that's good because you're not going to play him every single week. You don't want to be in and out of these sort of guys, I don't think, because they will move quite heavily with price fluctuations as their L10 moves. He's a good guy to have and hold within your gallery. Then at points throughout the season, you're going to have him. Again, 17 quid for his season one card. You're looking at sort of £27 for his season two. But on auctions, they're probably going to be uh, 26 on auction for this one, for example. I think he's a staple guy to have. And because he's so young, you're going to have him for a little while longer. They're not really a playoff team, I would say. But it's not. You, you're, if you buy someone, I don't think it's going to necessarily be you want to flip them a week later. You can look at them, but hold them for a few months or if you think they're going to be in the playoffs or hold them and have them for next year and train them up. That's also a benefit that I've had with some of the season one cards that I've got. Yes, I can't use them in some of the new flashy tournaments that are coming about, but I've got season one cards that have more XP on them than season twos. And when season twos go off next year, season three's about. These season one guys that I've got that I've built up and leveled up are going to be even better than the season three cards that come out. That's how you can play this game. Another guy I want to talk about is Tyrese Maxey. Obviously, the under-23 tournament that did just drop the other day, he's going to be one of the sort of top-end like top end talent guys that you can have, along with the Halliburton's and, and, and that sort of similar ilk of player. Maxey, in this new role within the Sixers, with no Harden there now, has really stepped it up, as you can see by the fact he's, he's operating under a 45 L10. He's got unbelievable fixtures coming up for Philly in the next few game weeks. The Wizards twice... The Pistons three times and the Hornets. So I would expect that one of those times he's going to outperform a 45. 
as you can see, like the Pistons, he dropped to 68. The Pacers, he dropped to 78. In these sort of games where they're high scoring, when it's a bit back and forth, Maxi is an unbelievable talent. We scroll on over to the marketplace and we take a look. £23 for his season one card. 30 quid for his season two card with the boost that's on there that you could play him in the flashy new tournaments that are going to be there for season two. And again, the Sixers are expected to go pretty well in the playoffs. I'm not sure I'd have them get in conference finals, but conference semis at a minimum, and that's how you can see them from there. So again, he's another guy that is good for not just now, but also future proof in your gallery. So another guy I want to talk about is Walker Kessler. Now, these guys aren't smash plays like some of the other ones that I've mentioned, but I feel like they're good options to have within your gallery again, just so they're there when you need them. Now, obviously, with Walker Kessler, a little bit of an injury concern around him every now and then. But again, this is a reason why it's good to have him in your gallery because he will be less sort of affected by price spikes is what I'll say. And I'll move on to that in a minute. But season one card, you're looking at £7, season two card around the 10 quid mark. 22 years of age, so he's going to be within the league for quite a while. The Jazz are not an amazing team. Last year, I think they had a bit of a sort of purple patch with Laurie Markkinen, shall we say. But again, he will be the main sort of talent that's within that jazz side, I would say, at the moment. The, the most like encouraging young player that they've got is what I would say. And you look at sort of these team scores here, and you're looking at 41 against the Grizzlies. You're looking at 45 against the Bulls. Teams that don't do well against big centers, Walker Kessler has provided has, and has shown that he can provide you with top-tier scores. Now, again... He's operating under an L10 of 30, and that's going to be baked into some of the stuff that happened towards the back end of last season with Utah and the whole shift around when Vanderbilt left and everything like that. But I think if you look at sort of the price fluctuations that come around him when he operates under a lower L10, you can see the spike that occurs. He's going for around £10, and then the spike happens nearly double. Okay, not nearly double, but there's a spike. There's a 60% increase there. So there are there are more than enough opportunities, I think, to have a Walker Kessler within your gallery. And right now is probably one of them. You're looking at seven pounds with him on auction. And I know the whole market's down, but to me, it's a time where you can get into a Walker Kessler. Another guy I want to talk about is Naz Reed of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now he's operating under an L10 of 21. As you can see from some of his scores in the past, very, very capable of outperforming a 21. Even the 30s are good enough. 40, the 66 game against the Warriors, which was quite a famous game for him last year that probably solidified his contract. But he's very capable of putting up a 30 to 40 point score if situations allow it. And by that, I mean, if Carl Anthony Towns sat or if Rudy Gobert sat or if Bo sat or if one and Carl Anderson sat, this is where Nas Reed becomes a smash play. Now, again, you're looking at not expensive prices for him. Seven pounds on the season one card. You're looking at nine pounds on the season two. And this is probably inflated because his L10 is just 21 right now. And if you look at the current state of games that they've got coming up, you've got the Grizzlies who deal terribly with big men. They've got a Mavs team that deals terribly with the big man. And even the pace is to an extent. Miles Turner's good, but not necessarily unbelievable against those sort of forward center-esque players. So I think, again, he's one of the guys you're going to want to look at just to sort of sit and hold. He isn't as spiky as you can see on this graph in terms of where he'll normally spike from in prices, where he will normally sit and then go up. But even then, you're talking 10 quid when he normally floats around the five mark, which is like 100% increase. So we're not talking large amounts here, but on the scale of buying players at the right time, I think you've got to plan out things, do your own research in any case, but Naz Reed is one of those ones that will always have an opportunity throughout the season to be a particularly good play in a certain week. The last guy that I want to talk about is Lou Dort. Now, Lou Dort from OKC, obviously last year he had more of those, I think they call it the Dort Chamber. That's normally what I see, or the Dortcha Chamber, everything like that, when he basically plays lockdown defense on the opposing team's best player. Again, this season he's shown it, but he's gone under the radar, I'd say, at OKC. There hasn't really been the hype for him. Not that there was really particularly loads, but I think when Chet's come in and you've got SGA, Lou Dort sort of gets forgotten about. And there's there's been other things happening in, uh, in OKC that we're not going to go into. But he's very capable, again, he's operating under an L10 of just 16. He's capable of hitting a 45-35 point game quite comfortably. I wish I could show you some of the old stat lines that he had last year. I don't know why I can't. Can I show you this season's one? And the reason for it is because he's a guard that can get defensive actions. He can score the ball well. He's not normally like a facilitating guard in that reset, in that sense. But look, you're seeing one block, two steals. Every game that he's going to have, three blocks, two steals, he will have defensive and decisive actions in that regard for you. I mean, this one was an outlier. 29 points, no assists, five boards, no steals or blocks. But 
when he has those good games, they can double his L10 and near on triple it operating under an L10 of 16. You're looking at the prices of a Ludor. He's 24 years of age. You're going to have him for a long time. Six quid for the season one. £7.50 for the season two card. To me, it's a no-brainer pick. OKC are only going to get better in the coming years. He's going to be around in that team in some capacity or another team is going to pick him up. There are not many of these sort of really good lockdown defensive guards that can also score the ball in certain situations. And for me, that's why he's a must He's a must own in your limited gallery. That's going to wrap that one up there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it and I hope you found it somewhat informative. Remember, nothing in this video you see is to be taken as financial advice. It's all just my own opinions of playing So Rare NBA. There are, remember to get involved within that So Rare NBA tickets competition that we're giving away here on the channel. Pair of tickets for the NBA. I mean, we can give that away now. If you enjoy seeing me do these types of So Rare videos, whether it be my Game Week, game week lineup ones, if it's some of the versus stuff that I'm doing and getting other guests on the channel, or just talking about So Rare in this regard, please leave a like on the video. It would mean the world to me. Drop me a comment down below if any of these guys you own in your gallery, or if I've missed anyone out that you think I should have spoken about. But if not, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching and peace.